Well, today is a rainy, wet, miserable day, but we've got good news. Transmission is ready. So I'm gonna head down to go see my guy. And we're gonna go pick up our trains today. Let's go. I, I heard there was a couple people that had some phone calls. I got maybe a phone some... call at, at work and I was like, what? <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, oh yeah, we saw you on that video. I'm like, I knew he was filming something, but right. I didn't know what. And uh, oh yeah. yeah. And then I had a guy come and I did a training for him. Nice. Uh, can't think of his name now. Yeah, I had because I had He's some from people. Pennsylvania. I had some people send me messages and stuff. So. Nice guy, and I, I was going to ask him, Tom was his first name. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. And uh, what hey. I did. This is your little oh, cheat okay. sheet. Yeah. Tells you about the holes over here. The holes, Ship, yeah. whatever, what, what they go in and all that. Yeah. And prices. I went ahead and did your tranny. Remember we talked yeah, about swapping. Yeah, going back and forth. I cut it, cut it down. Okay. Put fittings in it. Uh, put a ship lever and marker bit. Used your turbo shaft, which was the same thing as mine. Yeah. I did put a bushing in the pump. Okay. Matter of fact. I put a different pump in it because it's, I wanted a steel stator tube in it. Gotcha. I put the 180 straight cut. 180 straight which cut. Which is, that's what they are. Gotcha. Uh, that should hold, and it's got extra clutches in it. So right. That should hold a thousand horsepower, really. Yeah. I think um, we might we, we might teeter on the edge of a little bit more, but we'll you, cross that bridge when we get there. The stock case. I don't see an issue with it unless something's not lined up or flexing. Right. And of course, then right. you can even break the good cases. Yeah, if it's if it's messed up and it's flexing, it don't matter what case you got on it. And I put your locking stick in it. A locking dipstick. Look at that. Well, let's get the sticker in there. Man. Will be the valve body, and that's because I don't know exactly what that is. Yeah. So the, it's not. You said it's not an ATI valve body. And they've it has no markings, no initials, no nothing, no part number. Separator plate normally does. Right. That's, that's got nothing. So we've got an unknown valve body, but that matches the weird stuff that they had going on with the drill on the holes and, the and everything. And solenoid is definitely an ATI, but not, not the normal. Thing. Right. Not the one. Well, there you guys have it. We got the trans from Mr. Jay Bradford, aka Bad Habit Racing Transmissions. I'm real excited. I think he seems like the type to me, you know, I haven't had his transmission in the car or anything, but he seems like the type to me that really knows what he's doing and has been doing it a long time. All he does is touch power glides. He won't touch anything else. He knows his lane and he stays in it, and I'm really excited to get it in the car. And now that we've got the trans back, I think we can go home and start putting the car together. Like. I think we got all the parts and pieces. Unfortunately, we can't do the new motor yet, the badass motor, but I still wanna upgrade ECUs and everything before we do that anyway. So let's get this thing in with the backup motor. We haven't even tested anything like going down the road and you know, suspension and there's so many functions that have been added to the Holly and you know, the shifter working and everything. We gotta start figuring that stuff out. So let's get home and start getting this thing jammed together, see how long that takes. And then hopefully we can start working through some of the functions checks and go from there. Well, we got the power glide home, resting up on the fender here. It's a nice thing about having a rusty Nova. You can just place parts on it and not care about it. So I got to put this uh, mount in here on the tail shaft and we can go ahead and try to start sticking this thing in so we can then stick the motor in so then we can stick everything back together. There's a lot of stuff that's got to go back together, but I'm hoping uh, to get as much of that done as I can today. So let's get after it. Well, trains and converter are in, but trains are still kind of loose. I'm leaving that loose because I know that when we put the motor in, it helps a little bit if that thing's not torqued all the way down. So we can still move forward and back and slightly a little bit side to side, and then I can kind of make sure everything's straight, go from there. So let me start prepping this motor, put the motor mounts on and everything, and start figuring out dropping this bad, 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 bad this bad boy in.
sometimes my genius knows no bounds. Today's one of those days. Couldn't, I was trying to do the screwdriver thing and hold the flex plate and all that. Well, what I just did, took another flex plate, bolted it in to the bell housing bolt right there, locked it in with the other flex plate. Now I should be able to tighten down this balancer without having to go crazy. Yes, I know some people make like a thing. I've got a lot of extra flex plates. I might just take and make some, just cut them out. Boom, 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 boom. That'd be pretty dope. And then maybe I'll send it to the CAD guy and say, hey, can we machine something like this? And then maybe Shipbox will sell it. Who knows? But right now, this is really solving my problem, hopefully. So let's get this balancer the rest of the way on, then I can start worrying about putting the motor back in. Finally. I cannot believe it. That was one of the easiest engine installs, made it to trains, everything. I didn't even have to put any bolts in the trains to hold it, like everything just kind of sucked together and went in. Big part of that is that I've done this 50,011 times. Also, leaving all of those motor mounts loose, leaving the trains loose, all that kind of stuff, because now I can still reach in and add the bolt I need back there. I can tighten all those up. Then I can kind of square it up. I can grab the tail shaft of the trains and kind of you know shimmy shimmy and make sure it's all squared up and everything so man we might actually get this thing fired up tonight i mean there's still a lot to do there's hours of work but i just keep plugging away at it hopefully it keeps working just had to run out to the store and get some new bolts because my old bell housing bolts aren't gonna work. There's a difference. Uh, the, we used to have an aftermarket case in the car and now it's a stock case and the area where the bolts go in is a little different. So I just needed some different bolts. Also, I wanna swap a bunch of these out and put some anti-seize on them. I learned this lesson a long time ago that when you have an all aluminum block and you put a steel bolt into it and then you go racing uh, and then you have to take it apart it becomes a real pain in the ass sometimes they can get stuck up pretty good so i want to put some anti-seize on these <clears throat> so hopefully they don't get all jammed up in the aluminum block they haven't made any more progress here because i've been at the store and eating dinner and all that fun stuff but now i've got pretty much the rest of the evening to myself to make this thing run again let's go for it Getting pretty excited because we're about to start working these headers on and pour some gasket maker on there. And got these header bolts from Proform. Now, they are, there's the part number, that's the LS part number. They're wedge locking, they got this kind of locking washer on there. And they, when I met them out in California, they had a sample like to try it. You cannot get these things off without a tool. So I know that I've had problems with header bolts on the LS coming loose before. I'm looking forward to trying these out. Hopefully they uh, keep it nice and tight and especially we're hanging weight off it. We're hanging the turbo, all that. I don't have a support on there yet. So hopefully this fixes up some problems. Uh, when I do this, we're gonna have to put gasket maker on this. And if we follow the directions, we gotta let it sit and set for like an hour. So I'm gonna finish cleaning these off and then tighten them down. Then I can move over to the alternator. See, the alternator, if you guys remember the first time we tested this, um, it was looking like, you know, it was losing power throughout the run. Well, that is because of the alternator pulley. Allegedly, right, check that out. Allegedly, uh, if you have the wrong size alternator pulley on a factory GM truck alternator, you'll overspin it. It's not meant to do that many RPMs as we're doing. So we got a shipbox supply special edition alternator pulley. Hopefully this will fix us up on that too. So let me get these cleaned up. And once they're cleaned up and I start putting them on and get that gasket maker ready to set, I guess I'll go back and work on this. I still gotta do torque converter bolts, some stuff underneath. I think I'll wrap that up pretty soon too because once I get all that out, then I can take the car off the jack stands, lower it down. We don't gotta get under it anymore. Um, and it'll make it a little, little easier to reach over the hood like I've been doing. So making progress, keep going.
Somebody remind me the next time I'm online buying a bunch of stuff to buy LS metal header gaskets, the multi-layer steel ones. So I'm not gonna keep doing this crap. It was a good idea at the time because I didn't have them, but I need to order like 10 sets of those things. We do this enough. All right, well, now that I am done underneath, converter bolts all tight and Loctited. Remember that time I screwed myself with the pad out of round two because I didn't Loctite my converter bolts? Yeah, I remember. I also didn't forget, and that's what's important. Life's about learning lessons. So now that we got that hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and spin this thing around. That does not sound good. That does not sound good at all. Something is wrong. Shit. Let me just give it a quick. Oh Lord, I hope I didn't just break a brand new transmission. Uh, had spacing correct. I put spacers in there, everything else. And now we got this. So, yeah, that's odd. So I did the smart thing. Before I went any further, called my transmission guy, sent him a video, said, hey, take a peek at this, what do you think? Maybe I was a little premature, but I've been working a lot here lately. My brain ain't exactly working right. So he says, you know, I don't really think that was the trains. Why don't you go digging around a little bit? I said, okay, uh, but, but uh, let me, I'm gonna try to show you guys this. Because what I found so far, I don't know that you're gonna be able to see super well. But if somewhere up there, I don't know that you guys can see, but if you notice, the starter is still engaged to the flywheel. Flex plate, flywheel, sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and take it down, loosen it a little bit after I saw that. I showed him, I was like, oh, well there's a problem starter flex plate some some just not happy so I'm gonna go ahead try to take the starter down re-put I've never had to shim an LS starter like I've never had any issues like that um, there might be another issue that it could possibly be so uh, I'll have to see I had to use one of the uh, spacers for the snout on the converter because this converter didn't have the extended snout on it. So when you go, you know, like Power Glide or TH350-400 converter to LS, you gotta have that snout spacer in there for the converter pilot. So I'm wondering if maybe, maybe what I'm starting to think right now, which we'll start to check out here in a little bit, is maybe it's, maybe that snout spacer isn't quite right and it's pushed a little too much. If it's kind of like bending, you know what I'm saying? Bending the flex plate. If that's the case, it sucks because I have to pull the whole motor out to get it done because we're working on jack stands in the garage here. I can't just get the trains out from underneath. Well, I could probably get the trains out and push it out of the way enough because I don't have to take the trains all the way out. We'll get there when we get there. First, let me drop the starter, realign the starter, make sure it's just sitting perfectly. You know, I, I did torque it down, whatever. Let me just check that first. Let's go easiest and then we'll get more complex as we go along. All right, so first glance, took the starter down. Everything looks okay. I don't see anything jumping out at me is too crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and spin this bad boy over again. Sounds okay. Um, I'm wondering if maybe just we had a crap spot Maybe I didn't have the, the start. I mean, it's really hard to not have the starter lined up 110%. Now it sounds okay. I mean, it's turning over. The trains, motor's dry and everything. So we're not, you know, I'm not trying to fire it up, but you hear a little rotational noise. I think we might be okay. I think we just had a little starter hang up. It's definitely something I want to keep an eye on. I think that we can go ahead and keep moving forward on getting the motor together because nothing sounds abnormal now. So it was just weird. It was an odd thing. I don't know. Maybe it had something to do with the starter. I'm gonna check the starter again, see if it's still engaged. If it is, maybe I'll look into, I know some people have shimmed LS starters and whatnot. Maybe we just need a little shim action going on. So let me check it out. All right, well, 
We've got the turbo in place, which is big. I wanted to at least get there. I think we're going to call it a night for the night, get back on this tomorrow. I've been doing this all day long today, and there's been a bunch of little problems, little things here, there, wherever I got to fix, get right, whatever. So we've been fixing those along the way, and it's just taking a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, but it's all right. We still got to do a little bit of work on the shift linkage. Um, I'm just not 100% happy with it yet. Uh, I think that we may try a spacer on the starter. I want to see what's going on there because I think it's still getting stuck. So I want to see if I start it up, is it enough to, when it's running, will it kick the starter back out or is it going to be stuck? We'll figure that out pretty quick. But we can't do that without firing it up. So tomorrow I will finish this up and we will fire it up. But I'm getting a shower and going to bed. Back at it again today. And we're getting some more stuff knocked out. I went and bought the proper length belt because now that we've oversized the alternator pulley, we need a different belt. We got the turbo. Turbo's been on since last night. Everything's all good to go. Started getting the steam ports hooked up, the cooling system hooked up, everything. Now I need to make something out of this mess that is the wiring for all the injectors and all that kind of stuff. Get the intake on, coils, all the ignition stuff. And then from there, I still have to put the drive shaft in. I don't want to put any fluid in before we put the drive shaft in. Maybe mess with the torque converter spacing a little bit. I want to look at that again. I, I don't want to look at it again because it's a pain in the ass to crawl up under there and do it. But I want to make sure it's right. So I might double check that. But this all should be wrapped up here. I mean, it should be at a point where it's ready to fire and probably just another few hours. Pending, I don't have to go to the store for anything else. I didn't have my little steam port gaskets. So I'll give you guys dormant help five nine or five six three nine zero four pack. You should buy like 20 of those and just keep them on the shelf. Oh, and I gotta hook up. There's like some little grounds here I gotta hook up and some other stuff, but little stuff just gotta tweak away at it and hopefully we'll get this thing fired up within the next few hours. I really wanna hear it run again. That'd be very nice. getting excited because this thing is starting to look like a race car again we got some of the electronics in fuel rails on i still got to do the ignition system so i got to finish connecting all that stuff then i have to put the drive shaft in before i put any trans fluid in which i kind of screwed myself because the dipstick is way back there somewhere behind all that mess um still got a little you know mess to clean up and i still got stuff to plug in so some of that will go away and then I'll start zip tying and everything, but we've got oil in it. Shout out Hot Shots. We got some Hot Shots trans fluid getting ready to go in this thing. Uh, I need a dipstick. I just found one because I was like, man, what am I forgetting? I'm trying to take my time. You know, I don't have anywhere to go. We don't have any races this weekend. There might be a test and tune thing Sunday or something. I know some other local guys want to get up and test, so we might go out with them, but just kind of taking my time getting through it all and still got more to go, but we will be firing soon soon but not soon enough well we are finally at that point drive shaft is hooked back up fluids are in everything except water but that's okay because we're i'll put water in it in a second first thing i want to do is just turn it over a few times i went to do that and then realized up oh, the battery i think is struggling a little bit let me see here yeah Battery's just struggling a little bit and that's my fault because I didn't put it on the charger, but I definitely sure as heck have been using, I don't know if you guys remember seeing this in the trunk, but my air compressor set up, everything, airline on it, yeah, throughout this project, just blowing stuff out, just different stuff, been using the air compressor. So we're going to let that battery charge up a little bit, but what I can do is cycle the ignition on and off to check for leaks in the fuel system. So far, I see nothing. Yeah. And it's gonna shut off because it's powered by the Holly, so it's just when you key on it. Oh, there's a leak. See? See, we got a little one. We got a little one right there. No big deal, probably just not tight enough. Let me get through some systems checks, like the rest of this leak check, and turn it over a few times, and all that kind of good stuff. We still got it on the jack stands. 
Oh yeah, because I didn't tighten that one at all. Not with the wrench anyway. I'm gonna go through a couple of these, just make sure they're all good. Yeah, this one's leaking a little bit too, but that's my own damn fault. This is why you do this, because I had to fuel rail on and off so many times trying to set it right and make sure the injectors were seated properly and everything that all looks good i'm gonna run through all this and then i'll get mallory out here and we'll fire this bad boy up oh focus buddy focus why is it losing focus now it's focused magic remember that time i thought life was going to be uneventful and then i put water in the motor and what is happening uh, okay, where are we getting water from? Let me cut this water off. Uh, well, good news, bad news, a day in the life of me. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there is supposed to be a freeze plug that uh, I did not take out. And still my fault for not noticing that it was out, but I did not take it out. So I didn't think anything about putting it back in because I didn't even realize it was missing. That sucks. It sucks because it's behind the motor mount. So like, I'm sure we could find some kind of way to get it to work. Let's just make sure the thing even runs first. We can run it with no water in the block for a minute or so, or, you know, at least just fire it up because uh, yeah, that's going to be a little fun one to fix. So not the end of the world. Dang, I like, I didn't even, Throughout the whole process of this motor, I never once looked, and I put a motor mount right over it, never even looked at it. It'd be like that sometimes. Note to self, always check when you buy a block that has been disassembled to any extent to see if the freeze plugs are in it. I mean, I'm sure I've got more. Let's see. Which one is it here? Uh, not there. Okay, not on this block. I'll find it. I'll find it and we'll figure it out. Good times. Well, it's time to fire it up. I think. Huh. I'm gonna check over everything real quick and give it another stab at firing it up. Try again. <laughs> Wants to. Finally, we can't be going down like that. I'm gonna start it up one more time just so we can hear this thing purr and then I got some stuff to fix so we can get ready for testing. RPM. But one thing that has never ever happened before ever in my life with one of these junkyard LS is 75 pounds of oil pressure. That was about 3,000. I think I gotta adjust the, the throttle a little bit. Maybe something was off there, but not a big deal. I tried pulling on the gas pedal, like pulling it back, and that didn't work. So not a huge deal. We'll get it figured out. But man, 75 pounds of oil pressure at I mean, it was cold and that was 3,000 RPM. So I guess that's a good way to break in new bearings, right? Great time, motor runs, she works. Let's get freaky deaky. I'll see you guys next time where we're gonna take this thing out 
testing maybe out on the street maybe you heard there's a testing tune thing this weekend i'm not sure where we're going just yet but i do still have to nut and bolt check a bunch of stuff and find a freeze plug and i gotta adjust the shifter linkage still some more but other than that everything sounds good it sounds like any of that problem we have with the starter flex plate whatever is fine moving that thing around messing with it a bunch got it to work right so yes let's go I was just kidding that wasn't the end I went and took a shower and it was bugging me because I was like I think all it is is the throttle so I disconnected the throttle cable and that's all it is I just gotta adjust the cable and it idles like it's supposed to sounds okay we got a little bit of popping and banging we got a little bit of this and that we got a little bit of figuring out figuring out but oh it's back to life now I'm gonna go relax because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you guys I haven't been feeling the best the last couple of days um, I got some little health stomach issues things going on so it's been kind of hard and trying so I need to take this break now that it's running I need to take a break and then collect a whole list of what I still have left to do get it right and we can take it out testing but I couldn't let you guys go without a decent idling video so there you guys have it I will see you guys next time. Your boy's out.